work. Um, I'm sure all of you here um, use many different means to work. You're using your phones, you're using your laptops, and you're working in different places. Some of you may even be working in the space at this moment. Um, my titles aren't showing as, <laughs> as earlier. So uh, I'm going to be talking about the new generation workforce and what we can do uh, with space um, to help create um, environments that encourage um, young people such as yourselves um, to engage and work in the work environment. It's only recently that uh, things such as programming uh, have been able to be carried out from a beach environment. Um, a graphic designer no longer needs tools and, and space. They can work from a beach environment. Um, with the workspace um, changes in, in the world, um, flexible working is now possible. And for the younger generation, it has become the norm. Um, we use cloud-based devices. We use cloud-based services to engage with our work and communicate and connect across spaces. Um, this was going to say office with a question mark. Um, the office, what is the office? What is the office to you as a young person? What does it mean to work from an office? Um, have you ever thought why you work in an office and what the reasons are behind you working in an office? I'm sure many of you here, um, you're studying and you're looking forward to maybe working on, in an office on Hong Kong Island and that is your life. 60-70% um, of our lives is spent working. Um, we're spent in environments and spaces that kind of um, dictate how we live our lives and, and what we do with our lives. Um, a, a, a bad environment can have a negative impact on our lives. And creating spaces and communities that really encourage um, you to have a, a work-life balance and to have a work that you enjoy um, is powerful. The office. Why does an office exist? Has anyone ever thought through this? Um, offices came about from uh, the libraries, um, people sharing government documents, spaces to store um, important notices. Um, we moved through into the Industrial Revolution, where uh, vast amounts of information needed to be stored. Um, large uh, pools of workers were needed um, by merchants to be housed, to, to process the documents, store the administration, and uh, keep uh, records of what business was being transacted. This gradually changed, gradually moved. Um, we saw the open office environment uh, in the 1920s to the 50s, um, spaces that managers could manage and look out across the staff, oversee what work was being done, and communicate and collaborate with the people in the space. Um, as we progressed through into the 70s, cubicles arose. I'm sure many of you here who may be a little bit older have your own personal cubicle. Maybe Mark has one that he calls his own. Um, I used to work in a cubicle in local government back in London, and it's, it's a safe space. It's a space where you can feel, uh, I, maybe I can have an anonymous day today. I can go into work, I can get my work done, put my head down, and that's it. The world, is, the world is away from me. It doesn't encourage collaboration. It doesn't encourage connections. It doesn't encourage sharing of ideas. Um, and I think the newer generation is looking for that, that interaction within a workspace, and I think businesses and companies need to look for that within a workspace too. Um, as cubicles came down, though, what we started to see was the prevalence of the open office or the open plan space. Um, this space, I think, is 70% of US offices now have an open plan office, so many of you probably work from one. Um, the idea is to encourage collaboration and connectivity, but what we can see happen is that um, extroverts sort of start taking over the place. Introverts don't, no longer have a safe space that they can uh, re hide away fr um, from the troubles of the day. Um, that they can get some of their work done and they can focus down uh, on the problems and tasks at hand. It can be distracting. Um, I think we all agree that at the moment it's, uh, life is getting more distracting. We're constantly checking our phones. There's constant notifications happening, constant pings and constant um, needs of attention across all our devices. Um, the workspace is no different and I think deep work is becoming tricky to attain in a workspace. Um, you're always ha seeking new inputs th through a space, and you're, you're unable to focus on the task at hand. There's always an email. There's always a phone call. Um, things need to change to that I impact. But maybe they change too much within the workspace environment. Um, slides, uh, all sorts of fun things, hammocks. Um, we saw this, what I like to call the Googleification of the office space, um, primarily probably started by them. Um, we started to see this shared out across the media, um, fun things you could do in your workspace. Um, that would really kind of break the work-life balance, but perhaps encourage people to just treat work life as home life. Um, through this, uh, we started to see um, a bit of a change and a bit of a uh, furrowing down of the space. Um, and through this, I think co-working rose. So this is our space, uh, Garage Society. 
Um, yes, we are pet friendly. Um, animals are allowed in the space, and we like to collaborate and work with them. Um, so co-working is, is flexible workspace, shared workspace, where businesses can work together, um, collaborate, and communicate through ideas um, with offices, with shared um, desk locations. And this encourages people to uh, exchange knowledge, um, to communicate and create, um, to work together within a community, and encourage each other to uh, achieve. Why is co-working important in Hong Kong? I think um, we're, we're a, a vast space. Um, the island is very uh, populated, and these spaces uh, encourage different communities and different uh, arrangements of people to work together and achieve together. Um, but this change in workspace has been brought about by uh, new forms of technology, new digital tools, um, and this is why uh, the flexible generation who is looking for uh, new means of work is going to achieve in a different way. Um, storage. Storage used to require vast amounts of space. Storage is now in the cloud. Um, <laughs> clouds, yes. So all your knowledge is in the cloud. All your information, all your thoughts, your fears, your dreams, uh, everything that you share is out there, unless you're a particular type of person who has everything switched off on their phone and, and doesn't want to interact with the cloud. Um, the cloud has allowed the rise of these flexible spaces and has also allowed um, the next generation workforce to uh, expect different from how they work within a space. Um, previously, you had to get to your office, log into your computer. Um, everything was on an intranet or a local network system. Um, you had no access to that outside of work. Just a few years ago when I worked in government, there was no way for me to access any of my information, any of my documents, any of my emails through my phone. I had to be on location in the space. Um, now, with the advent of the cloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, all these tools that many of the new generation workforce are native in, are growing up using day-to-day, -day, um, it's become normalcy for them to use uh, a flexible space and not need to be tethered to one space. Um, as we're seeing this, there is, no need for, um, there is no need for a standalone office, and companies are changing the way that they're approaching how they m manage, manage and use their workforce. Um, a productive workforce does not need to be stored in one space, uh, focused in on and, and tethered. They're able to work independently across locations. Um, space. What does space mean? And, and why are they able to use it flexibly across locations? Um, what we see is that um, as companies grow, they're able to spread their workforce out across uh, different, different parts of the environment. Um, we have global companies working in Hong Kong with one user um, who is just based in the city. Through these tools, these digital tools, they're able to connect um, globally, connect with their companies, and teams in all different cities and different countries, and really uh, create great achievements. Uh, this says programming space, but it doesn't say programming space. It's just a white bar. Um, programming space is what I do at Garage Society. Um, so we have three locations on Hong Kong Island, one in Thailand. And what does programming space mean? No, I don't know how to code. Um, I tried. I've tried many, for many years, but it's never quite clicked. Um, Programming space is bringing life and energy into space through events, through workshops, through, through different kinds of talks and series. This space is an example. Um, when you all go out in between the breaks, there's no energy here. Nothing's happening. It's a dead space. When we're all in here, the thoughts and fears and dreams of everyone is exchanged, um, and you can almost feel the energy. Um, if you enter an abandoned building, if you're with Hong Kong Urbex, and you're entering an abandoned building, you feel that energy. We, we heard that from them as well. You feel the energy. You feel the the desolation, you feel maybe what was past. If you enter a music hall, um, you feel the energy in the space. You hear the notes. You hear all the renditions that have been played in the space. Um, and with programming space, what we're trying to do is bring that energy and that community to our workspaces. Um, people these days want to connect. They want to collaborate. And they want to feel at home in a space. They want to feel at home in a community. Um, workspace is not just a real estate play. It's about people. It's about community. It's about collaboration and connections. And with the workshops, talks, events, and series that I put into our spaces, we hope to achieve that and allow what I like to say curated collisions to happen. Um, we want to encourage uh, a certain type of individual who is open to new experiences, who's open to working um, in our environment to uh, find out about, about us, to join us, maybe become a member to work in the space in the day, or simply come in in the night, listen to speakers like we've had today, um, and gain some inspiration and go back and, and change maybe the view and how they see um, how their work should be. 
when we talk about programming in space as well, we can also talk about uh, turning what is ostensibly an empty uh, storage room that was being used um, over in Thailand for uh, many weeks um, as kind of a, the back end of a renovation job into a space that is uh, full of young people communicating, collaborating across cultures, people who travel, are traveling across the world um, and are all in one space um, looking to work, looking to learn new, new skills and connect with each other. Um, this is in Thailand, a space that we um, put together in partnership with Lubdi, and this is focusing at digital nomads. And if you didn't know what a digital nomad is, uh, it's someone who can work remotely, who is basically at the cusp of this new generation workforce, who's looking to um, engage and work solely through a laptop, moving remotely every two to three months, um, and not, not having one fixed abode, not staying at a desk, um, simply uh, moving with the times, taking in new experiences, connecting, and uh, doing all their work through the digital tools that are available. Um, this is a play by us to uh, explore how we can work and interact with this community and connect with them. The difficulties with this community is that they're constantly moving, they're in flux. I think for a community to grow, you need some key linchpins to be there, to be encouraging, you need people to be reciprocating, you need almost um, people who are your, your, your cheerers, who are working for you to encourage other people to be engaged with the community. Um, and we see with this that this is only going to become more prevalent. Um, flexible working and working in this manner is going to change um, how we interact with space. It's going to change the need for fixed officer bones. And we already see uh, large companies, HSBC recently has moved their team into, uh, their digital team into a flexible workspace in Causeway Bay. They're changing how they interact with real estate. They're changing the needs to um, put down such vast sums to, to call a space their own. And because of this, um, we're going to see a, a vast change in how us here, young people, are maybe working in 20 to 30 years' time. Um, millennials. They look like millennials. There was a title that said millennials. Um, we, we heard about them earlier. 70% of millennials are interested and keen to work flexibly. They don't want it to be tethered to a space. Um, they want to kind of dictate their own hours. Why should we work 9 to 5? Many of us have different time rhythms. Some of us prefer working in the morning. Some of us work great at night. Um, with this revolution, we're going to see that um, the ability to work to your own schedule and work within your own schedule is going to become available, uh, and, and companies are going to embrace that. And instead of the old style, housing everyone under one space to increase productivity, we're going to see a new way of being empathetic towards the needs of people and productivity uh, increasing because of that. But what does the workspace of the future look like? Um, this is a project in uh, the Netherlands um, from a few years ago, looking at a future workspace that required no sitting, no, no seats. Um, the idea is there's, there's sort of places you can lean, places you can move, uh, places you can kind of kneel casually on. Some of you are shaking your heads. <laughs> um, and this is a concept that's not just um, looking at how the conventional office can be changed, um, how there is not really a need anymore for four walls, a desk, a screen, um, but also how many of us are concerned with um, the impact of sitting for eight to nine hours a day, um, what that can have on your health, what that can have on your ability to, to live a long and, and fruitful life. Um, the idea here is that with constant movement, you're, you're keeping healthy, you're keeping fit, you're keeping strong, um, you're keeping well. And I feel that we're going to see more and more of these, these sort of ideas uh, filtering into the, the workspace environment. We already see it with treadmill desks. We already see it with standing desks, which we provide as well at Garage. Um, the ability to stand and work is becoming more and more prevalent. Um, and people are more keen on this. They no longer just want that cubby hole where they can sit away. But what's the next step uh, beyond space? Um, I think we're all um, aware here that real estate is very expensive, space is limited in Hong Kong. Um, what options are available when we're looking beyond the, the idea of the conventional workspace and, and what can we do with that? Um, virtual reality, I feel, is gonna be a strong uh, proponent of this. Um, as we become more flexible and embrace this, this environment, the need to still connect and be in the same in space with someone is going to be there. Um, I see a future where people will log into their device You'll be in a room with your clients. You'll have no need to travel to see your clients. Um, and perhaps you just have a space within your own home where that is your workspace. You walk in, plug yourself in, and there you are in your space with your clients or with your team that's across, across the globe. Um, this ensures that you still have that interactivity between people in a, within a space. You're not just staring at a flat Skype screen. Um, 
And I think this is something that we're going to see more and more of augmented reality, augmented versions of how we work and interact with our, our products and devices, um, new ways of interacting with our clients as well. Um, it's going to change the way we interact with our space. So the new generation workforce. Um, what does the future have in store with for us? Um, I see, I see that the future here for us is that we're going to be untethered from space, untethered from the needs to be in a particular location, untethered from the need to be overseen uh, by management. Um, digital tools, digital devices allow us to collaborate in new ways um, and, and ways that are improvement on the previous um, of how office space is used. I had a nice little um, final statement here to say. Um, which for me is that um, the way how space is created um, and how space is used and how we can create space for you uh, has a change in your life. Um, how you interact with the space is important for you in terms of how you live your life and in creating new spaces and new experiences for work and we can create uh, a new way and a new experience for how you live your life. So uh, thank you guys and uh, thanks for Mark for sharing this evening. Thank <laughs> you.